Hello, hello. I missed you guys last week. Oh my goodness. I always miss you when I'm not here. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the Cancer Coach Talks. I'm your host, Leslie Nance. And tonight we are going to be talking about healing versus curing or curing versus healing. <laughs> We're going to talk about a very uh, detailed subject tonight. So you guys bear with me, put your, put your listening brain on, take notes, do what you need to do, because this is going to be some really important mindset shifting information tonight. So let me introduce myself. I already said my name is Leslie Nance. I am the founder of Any Stage Cancer Protocol. I am a seven and a half year cancer survivor. Um, I am a certified holistic nutritionist. I'm a certified holistic cancer coach. I'm a certified plant-based chef. I got certifications coming out my ears. <laughs> and tonight, um, I'm going to certifiably help you change your mindset and your perceptions around the difference between curing and healing. So thank you so much for joining. Please, uh, if you're watching tonight, the only way that we know that you're here is that if you leave us a comment, I'm going to get to those at the end of uh, at the end of the session tonight. So everybody that's saying hello, hello, hello. It's good to see you. Thank you so much for taking a little time out of your evening. Excuse the mic noise. I'm going to move the mic a little bit because it's and it sometimes it makes really horrible noises when I do that. So pardon that. Uh, but I want to get it a little bit closer so you guys can really hear me tonight. <laughs> OK, so looking forward to sharing this information with you. I wanted to share it last week, um, but had a new client that was starting uh, last week and wanted to make sure that she got full priority and had plenty of time for her very first uh, coaching session. I'll talk more about coaching a little bit later in the broadcast, but right now we're going to jump right into the subject. Hello, everybody. It's good to see you. <laughs> so, all right. So um, let's talk about the 90 billion with a B, 90 billion. I felt like, I felt like Ferris Bueller's teacher, nine times, no, the principal, nine times, 90 billion dollar effort that has been made at curing cancer. Now that's only one organization and that's the National uh, Cancer Society has spent 90 billion dollars on looking for a cure for cancer. And I am here to tell you right now that that is robbing the energy of healing cancer. And I'm going to talk about what I mean. I'm going to be referring to my notes a lot tonight because I have written down some very specific things that I want to share with you. So please forgive me if I'm looking down a lot. They're on an iPad in front of me here. So hopefully I'm not like this uh, the whole time. <laughs> I'm going to share some very specific information. Healing and curing are not the same things. They are different energies. Curing the word and, and 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 words are really important. So let's be really clear about this because words are really important when we're talking about something as monumental in one's life as a cancer diagnosis, right? And so, you know, the word cure really signifies, and I wrote this down in quotes, so let me read it to you. The word cure signifies when someone has successfully controlled or removed the physical progression of an illness. I'm going to read it one more time. When one has successfully controlled or removed the physical progression of an illness, specifically what we're talking about tonight is cancer. Um, so, you know, it, it, it sounds great, right? A cure sounds great. It looks good on paper. You've, you've heard people say that. She looks good on paper, but maybe she's a rat. Maybe she's a real stinker, but she looks good on paper. And that looks really good. That sounds great. Yeah, let's do that. However, when we're seeking a, a cure for cancer, the patient is really inclined to give over their control to their doctors or their treatments. And they rely solely in the process of using cancer treatments are a doctor specifically to help with the cancer treatments to cure them because that's what a cure is it's the physical removal of a disease specifically cancer 
And this causes something that I see over and over and over again. When someone gets into that mind space and they put all their eggs in that basket, that that doctor or that treatment is going to cure them, what happens is, is when if or when it doesn't work, then they fall victim to the circumstance and they move into victim mode. This doctor can't cure me. This treatment can't cure me. And that leaves you feeling hopeless and angry and defeated and maybe even fearful for your life. And that is a slippery slope, my friends. That is where I see people lose the most control is when a treatment stops working. Our doctor says, this is all we can do for you. So what? That's what they say. If a car mechanic said, this is all we can do for your car, would you just go, well, I guess that's it. Take, keep my car, you know, just let it die. Or would you go get another opinion from another mechanic? You would seek out one of your biggest investments in life, your car, you would seek out a way to fix the problem. You would try to figure it out, especially if you couldn't afford a new car, especially if you didn't have time to go look for a new car, especially if you really loved the car that you already had. This is no difference. And the mindset is no difference as well. When we think about cure and we don't receive that cure, a lot of people are putting all their eggs in there in one basket about curing cancer. Oh, we're going to find a cure for cancer. Oh, they're looking for a cure for cancer. They spent $90 billion looking for a cure for cancer. Do you know how much $90 billion is? That is, that is right at Jeff Bezos, Amazon, total net worth. So if you take all of Jeff Bezos money and you put it towards a cure for cancer, that's how much 90 billion dollars is and that that verbiage and that amount of investment and that intensity is robbing people of something very important called a healing or healing healing is very very different holistic philosophy this is what I am. I'm a holistic practitioner. Holistic philosophy teaches that you are responsible for the creation of your health. So therefore, on many levels, you are responsible for the creation of your illness. Now, I just pissed a whole bunch of people off when I said that because you're going, are you saying that I caused my cancer? Yes. I'm saying that you need to take some responsibility that you played a role in that, somewhere you left the door open, either willingly or unwillingly. Let's take the man that lives in uh, California that, had, uh, that, that won the lawsuit against Monsanto. He played a role, unknowingly, he played a role in his illness. He sued Monsanto for, uh, because Roundup causes uh, uh, lymphoma and he's dying of lymphoma. And he sued Monsanto and he won because Roundup causes lymphoma. <laughs> and so he won this case, but he had some responsibility to pay in that. Unwillingly, unknowingly, he used Roundup, not knowing that it could cause lymphoma. But there's still some responsibility in that. And so sometimes it's a product of our environment. Sometimes it's a product of what people consider genetics. When I think about genetics, you know what I think about? I think about what you learned at the dinner table. That's where stuff gets passed down. You want to talk about genes? That's where you inherited your belief systems about healings and cures and cancer and diet and exercise and mindset and positivity and, 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 and how you relate to people and how you deal with stress and how, 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 how. That is where you inherited this kind of information. And because holistic health says that I'm responsible for my own health, that also means that I'm responsible for my own illness. And I make choices every single day that either lead me to health or either lead me to illness, knowingly or unknowingly. 
Is that a word unknowingly? Well, it is today because I'm on fire. <laughs> if you're only interested in a cure for cancer, then you're missing the opportunity to heal your life. You're missing the boat. You're missing an opportunity not only to heal your cancer, but to heal your physical body, your emotional body, your spiritual body. You're missing out on something really vital. You want cancer to leave and to stay gone for good? Then you will focus on healing. You won't focus on curing. Curing cancer does not mean if you cure cancer. Let's say that they come out with a cure for cancer, right? If there is a cure for cancer, this does not mean that the emotional, the psychological stresses, the physical stresses that are left behind from a cancer journey have gone away. This is a lot of frustration for people. You've heard of people that, you know, that have that have been cured of their cancer and in several years it reoccurs again. And it's likely that they didn't look for the healing in their lives. They relied solely on the medical community to cure them. And that's what they're good at. The medical community is great at helping you cure cancer, but you're not healing the body. I see some angry faces. You guys are hitting the little angry button. Good. I hope you get fired up. I hope you get mad about this. You should be mad about this. I don't even care if you're mad at me. Made you think. <laughs> but if you do that, if you are only curing something, you're still leaving that door open that might have created a scenario where cancer could have developed in the first place. What if it was diet related? What if it was emotionally related? What if the guy that had Roundup, you know, lymphoma kept using Roundup? What if he didn't go after the big bad wolf? The chances of his, his cancer progressing and getting worse would be very, very good. You're not solving the problem. You're only treating the problem. And that's not a solution. So if that's the case, if you're only looking for a cure or you're only receiving a cure, which is what your doctors help you with, then it's possible and even probable that illness will return because you have not plucked out the root that has caused the problem in the first place. I love it when people say to me, you know, my my grandma, she drank and smoked and ate bacon every single day and she lived to be 95. In what condition, I always want to ask, did she live to be 95? And also her food sources were very different 100 years ago. Right. Very different than what we deal with currently in our food systems. And the mindset was very different. And so while that may be true for grandma, if you try to follow in grandma's steps and you get cancer and then the cancer is cured by whatever medical methods that you've used and you just go back to your lifestyle, the chances are the cancer's coming back because you've not chosen to heal your body. So what is healing? If the cure is technical and done by a technician, like a doctor, then what is healing? Healing's an inside job. Healing comes from within. Healing comes deep inside. It's a choice that you make to be different in your life. It's an empowerment that illness, like cancer, gives us. Where we say, this is a problem, and I want to correct the problem. I want to correct why it came in the first place. Sometimes that's diet. Sometimes that's mindset. Sometimes that's healing trauma, physical or mental or emotional. 
sometimes that's stepping outside of your tribe where you've learned how to live life, your parents, the influencers in your life. And I'm not talking about Instagram influencers. I'm talking about people that you grew up with. It's called your imago in some circles, the people that, in, that left their impression on you in life. Sometimes it's stepping outside of that impression and choosing to be something different. You hear about people that started at the very bottom. They were given no chance whatsoever. You know, they were going to end up being a criminal or they were going to end up in prison or they were going to end up in a you know societal system that held them down. And somehow they reached beyond themselves and became something different and proved everybody wrong. I'm smirking because I was kind of one of those people. I pretty much believe that no one in my teenage years, except my parents and maybe maybe some friends, thought that I would ever amount to anything, that I would just be the girl that's always goofing off and always worried about her hair and always worried about what kind of clothes she's wearing and what kind of car she's driving and just married and you know, certainly not the career person that I have turned out to be and certainly not in a position where I'm an authority on a subject like healing cancer. And so I'm smirking because I was kind of that person. But somehow rise above that, rise above what the choices that I was given in my life or that someone was given in their life and choose to be different. That is healing your life. And that's way different, wouldn't you agree, than curing something. So it's an inside job. It's investigating your attitudes. It's investigating your relationships. It's investigating, you know, not only your relationships. When we hear relationship, we think about people, right? We, we think about relationships with other people. But it's investigating your relationship with food. It's, it, it's investigating your relationship with cancer, which is huge, because a lot of us were taught how to think about cancer, either from a circumstance that happened to us. We saw somebody transition through cancer or or, you know, for me, I never knew anybody that had cancer. But I saw this horrible like story on TV when I was like 11 years old of this kid that had brain cancer and they had to shave off all his hair and cut into his skull and he had to be awake for the surgery. Oh, my God. I was, I feared cancer from that point on, among other things. There's another scenario too that I share in different places, but it made me terrified of cancer. I was programmed with that fear and what happens, it shows up in my life. I had dreams about having to tell my parents before I was diagnosed, I had dreams about having to tell my parents that their only child, not only their only daughter, but their only child had cancer. And guess what happened? And you may be saying, you can't control your dreams. No, but I can control my emotions around those dreams. <laughs> can you guys hear Penny Lane? I can control how I process those dreams in real life. I can't control the dream, but I can control how I act around the dream. I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to happen. And it did. That's scary. So it's an inside job, examining relationships, examining relationships with people, with food, with cancer, with religion, with belief systems, with whatever it is that you're struggling with. It's about healing being an inside job is about reforming your belief systems around a particular subject. It's about a creation of confidence and self-esteem and a belief system that you can truly do this, that cancer is not your destiny. I don't say cancer is not your destiny because it's cute, because it's a nice little catchphrase. Oh, how positive is she? It's because I freaking believe it. Ask any of my clients. I 100% believe that cancer is not their destiny destiny or yours or mine or anyone's. Our bodies are designed for healing. They're not designed to be sick. You have to give it the right information to do that. And part of that is believing in a healing process and committing to a healing process and staying out of that robbing attitude of a cure. Love, self-esteem, 
ultimately health. Those are the belief systems that make you strong, that heal your body, and ultimately, probably heal your cancer. The word cure steals an amazing amount of energy from the word healing. Cure takes you out of the driver's seat and puts you in the hands of practitioners like doctors and nurses and cancer treatments. I wish you could see what I'm seeing. Hold on, I have to show you. I'm sorry. I totally, this is like total squirrel moment, but you have to see this. Hold on. Let me see. Look at She's wrapped up in my curtain. <laughs> She's just totally on her belly and totally wrapped up in my curtain. I just couldn't not show you that. That's hilarious because she's a piece of work, that one. <laughs> she's just making all kinds of noises, acting crazy. Perfect poodle. <laughs> she's a clown. <laughs> but cure robs you of the control over the situation. It gives, because you're relying on somebody to cure you. Healing gives you back that control and makes you a cancer boss. It allows you, even one step further, it allows you to be a cancer boss. It allows you to take back what cancer has ultimately feels like it has robbed from you. Choose healing. Stop depending on other people for a cure. Look inward. Use their wisdoms. Use what they have to offer you. I'm not telling you to ditch your doctors. In fact, don't ditch your doctors. I'm not telling you to forget treatments, to forget all that crap like a lot of people would tell you, right? They're just trying to kill you. They're just trying to get your money. They just want you to stay sick because there's more money in you being sick than la, la, la. BS. And if you believe that's true, then you really will benefit from taking back the power that this has tried to rob you of. Don't let cure rob you from what is rightfully yours, which is a way to heal your life. Maybe cancer never leaves your body, but you've healed your life in this process. Your quality of life becomes amazing despite what is happening in the cancer journey. You look at people with new eyes. You feel with a new heart. You choose to incorporate love and self-esteem and confidence in your life. Do you know how healing that is in the body? Do you know how healing it is for me to even make the suggestion in my own body? I had to get rid of cynical Barbie. There was a girl... If I had an alternate personality, it was cynical Barbie. If you don't have something nice to say, come sit by me. That was my favorite saying. I stole that from Steel Magnolias, by the way. But I, I, I loved, I thrived off of tearing other people down behind their backs. It's terrible when I say it out loud, but it was so true. I was angry and bitter and it stemmed from my own self-worth and self-confidence. I'd pick on people for things that I was worried about in my own life. And when I was diagnosed with cancer, that lady, she left. She had to die. Cynical Barbie left the building. She was no longer welcomed in my life. And whether cancer was going to take my life or not, I was going to live with an amazing new perspective on humanity and how I truly wanted to live my life. And what I truly, the legacy that I truly wanted to leave behind. There she goes. Cancer taught me that. It gave me that on a silver platter. That is healing. That's how I chose to heal. It was just a small part. I had to change my relationship with food. I had to change my relationship with others. I had to change my thought processes about my fear around cancer. That was all very healing from me. Each one of you is on a different path, a different journey. You have different things that you need to heal in your life. 
but you will be amazed at how inhospitable the body becomes when you choose that healing. And you may be saying, duh, of course I choose healing. No, most of you are looking for a cure. You're not looking for a healing. You're looking for a cure. You pray for it every single day. Don't give your control away like that. You alone are responsible. Your body knows how to do the work. You just need to give it the information to do that. You can do it. I believe in you. That's all I have for you this evening. I'm going to go look at some comments. I just went right through instead of letting the comments distract me <laughs> tonight. I wanted to be really respectful of your time tonight. So I'm going to take about five minutes and look through the comments here. Thank you guys. If you have to pop out, thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. I love that you took time out of your evening to come and learn and to grow. And hopefully you have some really good takeaways from this tonight. If you're interested in empowering that system in your body, I am your girl. I'm a certified holistic nutritionist, certified holistic cancer coach. I am trained to help you learn to empower your body towards healing. If that interests you whatsoever, I will leave a link in here and you can go click on that link and book a free call with me. That is a discovery call to make sure that I can help you. If I can help you, I will tell you right there on the phone that I can and I will explain how that works. Um, and if you have any questions between here and there, you're welcome to leave them here in the comments. Um, I will see them or um, you can connect with me through that link. So again, thank you guys for being here. So let me go and look at some uh, some comments. If you have a question, I would uh, totally recommend that you hit me up in the in the comments right now um, because I'm going to take about five minutes and scroll through these. I got I got salmon waiting for me. <laughs> mm, I only eat salmon like once a week, and I'm like super excited because tonight's the night. <laughs> So, all right, let's go look at some. Hi, everybody. Oh, my gosh. Look at all the highs. It's good to see you guys. Oh, look at all you beautiful people that are here tonight. Hello. Hello. Thank you guys so much for being here. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Oh, I love it. Jennifer saying you are helping me pluck the root. That's right. We are plucking. Oh, look, is that the picture of you and your dad? That's so cute. Uh, sorry. <laughs> totally crunching on Jennifer's picture. That is so adorable. But anyway, yes, that's right. You are working on plucking that root right out because you know that cancer is not your destiny and your body is proving it to you right now. Hey, Randy. Oh my gosh. Hi, Randy and Donna. It's good to see you guys. Thank you so much for being here tonight. It's lovely to see you um, here in the comments. Um, I love you very much. And um, yes, and same thing, Randy, kicking butt, taking names for sure. Uh, let's see here. Anne-Marie says, uh, change lifestyle and foods. 100. Oh, look at all these beautiful couples. <laughs> Anne-Marie. I love it. I love it. Uh, Anne-Marie and Chris there. So um, yes, changing lifestyles and your food um, is a huge, huge step in the right direction. 100% in, in working towards healing your body. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, thank you. It's good to see you. Thank you so much, Eli, for being here. I uh, love our Ellie. Sorry, I never know what to say there. <laughs> I, I screw it up every single time and I apologize. Know that I love you and I appreciate you being here, but you're welcome. I'm glad you found some value there, right? Um, Jennifer is saying, uh, I've been having a few rough days. So, <laughs> and this is a heart opener and an eye opener. I love that. I love that sentiment. It's true. Right. When you open your heart to healing, when you really make a choice to turn your heart towards healing, um, it's it really does make a huge difference um, in in your in your ability and your mindset and your confidence to truly make a huge difference in your life. I love it. I love it. <laughs> That's funny. I love it. Francis saying this message is timely. I'm soon deciding to stop medicine since I have been in remission uh, for two scans. Wow, that's amazing. Congratulations. Love it. Congratulations to you. Fantastic news. Yeah. Hi, Stella. Robin and I are just fine. Thank you for asking, right? It's true, Kathy. The fear can become all consuming or all too consuming. It is, you know, and it... it 
fear is a protection mechanism that we are instilled with. And we're taught to try not to have fear, right? Don't, don't be fearful. Don't be fearful. But truly, we are made to feel fear as a protection mechanism. And it's what keeps us on the straight and narrow. If I did not have some concern about cancer returning in my body, I would go eat at Whataburger tonight. But because I do have that concern, and I really want to create that inhospitable environment to cancer. And I'm, I'm, I'm human being. I understand like <laughs> wanting things in your life, but I also understand wanting something else more. And once you've ever heard the words, you have cancer, it's really hard to turn that signaling system off. Um, so, you know, we'll be working, Kathy, I promise on making that a, an ally in your journey and certainly not something that is consuming you in a way that is defeating. So promise, swear, pinky swear. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Um, oh gosh, lots of comments here. Uh, la, 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 la. Oh, I love it. Thank you, Dolly Lee. That's so sweet. Thank you for, uh, thank you. I understand the difference now between curing and healing. It's a big difference, isn't it? And it has totally different energy. When you think about it, there's like totally inner, different energy. One is giving everybody else the control and the other is taking back the control. And that is that is a big step in the right direction for sure. Thank you for being here tonight, Sam, and you're jealous, right? I know. Mm, I can't wait, right? <laughs> Paulette says that she has been on a plant-based diet for six and a half weeks. Good for you. Keep going, Paulette. Love it, love it, love it. There's lots of good recipes over uh, at gotokitchens.com. Lots of good plant-based recipes. That's our sister uh, uh, website. So, yep. Yeah, love it. <laughs> love it, Amory. right? Let's see. Estelle has a... Estella has a question. I've uh, been on a plant-based diet. When I go to eat meat, I get sick. Is that because my body got used to eating plant-based? Um, it could be, yeah, a disruption in your digestive tract. It's actually probably more that you were never able to eat meat. And then once you remove it, you realize uh, the difference in your health. Um, and when you eat it, um, you're really zeroed in on the fact that it it's something that you shouldn't be consuming. I was just talking to someone right before this, uh, right before this uh, session tonight. I was speaking to someone about um, how how women are really gauged more towards eating a uh, plant based diet because we love health. I mean, we love healthy hair. We love beautiful skin. You know, we like long, strong fingernails. I mean, and all of those things we think about when we think about eating healthier food and that how men actually are, uh, associate a, a, a plant-based diet or a vegan or vegetarian diet with a feminine quality because they want something different in their health. They typically want vitality and energy and to be big and strong. And so it includes more meat. Typically a male diet does. And it's true that we're two totally different creatures. Um, so men and women, of course, and you and I and everybody on the planet are totally different creatures than one another. Um, but it's, it's very interesting, the thought processes. So it's probably more about that you were never truly your body was never truly comfortable eating a lot of meat. And then when you try to introduce it back in, you realize the difference in, and, and when you do and don't eat meat, that's probably what happened. It's probably not the meat itself. Yeah. So. Ooh, to a steak. All right. On that note, I am Audi. I love you guys so very much. Thank you for spending a little time with me this evening. Uh, I will be back next Tuesday with another edition of the Cancer Coach Talks. Make sure you follow this page. Make sure you share out. And if you're interested in booking that call with me, I'm going to drop that link right now um, in the comments. You can just click on that and book a free call with me. There is no obligation whatsoever. Uh, we're just going to discuss like how it was discovered, what's going on, what treatments you're in, what you're struggling with, what's working. We're going to really work uh, towards those those good uh, ideas about how to help you heal. I'm going to put you on that path. Whether you decide to work with me or not, I am still going to put you on that path towards healing because that's what I believe in. And I know that our bodies are capable of that because God designed us that way. So. All right, you guys. Hi, Jessica. It's good to see you, right? <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I love this. So, um, oh, uh, Jessica, that's her and her dad there. Thanks, Leslie, for the phone call this evening. You have given my dad and family hope. I love that. This is the power in that phone call, you guys. Um, thank you for sharing that, uh, Jessica. 
that is the power in that phone call. I literally hopped off the phone right before I came into the broadcast tonight um, with, with this family and um, really leaning into the wisdoms of helping the body heal. And, um, and that's, that's the product of that. And plus they're an amazing family. And I just, oh my goodness, they just filled my heart tonight as well. You guys fed me just as much as, as you got from, from, it was very symbiotic. <laughs> we were sharing very much in that. So yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, go enjoy my dinner. Thank you. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, just Tuesdays, actually. I Somewhere, if you saw that they're on Thursdays, uh, they're no longer on Thursdays. They are just on Tuesdays. Uh, Tuesdays at six. I had to ditch Thursdays because I had to make more room for clients. So we only do them uh, once a week and not actually every week. I try to, but sometimes I have to miss. Like last week, I wasn't here because I, I was helping a client. So thank you, Kathy. I love you so much. I know. Looking forward to moving forward. Me too. Yay. I can't wait. We get started this week. I have so much good information for you. You're welcome, Dolly Lee. Thank you so much for being here. I will go enjoy my dinner. All right, guys, I am out. You guys have a great evening and I will see you next Tuesday for the Cancer Coach Talks. Look for that link coming up right now. Oh, hey, wait, stop before you leave. One thing I wanted to tell you before you leave. <laughs> Cancer is not your destiny. Love you guys. Bye.